Beyonce's new album called Renaissance has been an absolute smash this year and also a little bit divisive, but it's genuinely like a fascinating melting pot of influences. And as music producers, I think it's important that we sort of pay attention to the innovation and creativity of others to try to extract some value that we can implement into our own art. So today I wanna to give you guys five things that you can take away from that album and incorporate on your own. When the album was first released, Beyonce wrote an open letter to her fans where she said that her intention with this album was to create, quote, a safe place, a place without judgment, a place to be free of perfectionism and overthinking. And it's hard to imagine the pressure that she feels on a daily basis, probably to live up to those expectations, both from her massive amount of fans, but also, you know, from herself. As a creative, I'm sure that you're familiar with those demons. I know I am. And it's just, it's so easy to get caught up in what you imagine other people want you to do or what other people want you to sound like that it sort of hinders your creative output. I think the lesson at play here is that your creativity is valuable in its rawest and most natural form and people will connect with that freedom of expression if you give them the chance to. Listeners will inevitably be divided on your work so you might as well just make it your most authentic self and if she can do it on the biggest possible stage, so can you and I. You guys ever have those songs that you make that are completely outside of the normal genre that you do, but you actually really like the sound of, but you'll never let it see the light of day because you know it's outside of what people would expect from you? It sort of reminds me of that Mac DeMarco TikTok. Just garbage, but fun to make. The thing is, all those songs are still you, just you expressing your creativity differently, which is totally fine. It's almost you being creative with your creativity. Once you put on the album, it's really easy to hear how much more dance oriented it is than her previous albums. But to me, that just means that her creativity isn't just bound to one genre and neither is yours or mine, and it shouldn't be. She wanted to pay homage to the roots and the influences of the culture that she identifies with, and that's totally fine. I think that people can appreciate an artistic journey, especially one that shows growth and experimentation and confidence, even if they're kind of just stuck on the old sound. Now, to get into some more specific and detailed production elements that you can take away from the album, there are a few songs I think that showcase some unique sounds that really caught my attention. Like if you listen to the song Energy, for example, yeah, the initial bass sound is awesome on its own. But there are all these like fading, distorted, bending sounds that sweep around the stereo image and it adds a lot of interest. Or like in the song Thick with a Q-U-E, <laughs> it's not just your standard kick, hat, and snare. There are a lot of like filtered, distorted, noisy effects layered on top, which gives it kind of a unique groove. That's that big. And if it's unique, it's something that I'm likely to come back to, in my personal opinion. It's pretty easy for us to get caught up in this piece of gear or this synth patch, but try setting aside some time to add in some more handcrafted, glitchy, percussive textures on top of like the classic elements that everyone expects to hear for something a little bit more spicy. Another pattern that caught my ear was that there seemed to be some real intention behind the intros and especially the outros of each song. And yeah, I'm sure this was partly because they wanted the album to flow from song to song really smoothly, like a lot of the albums that she was paying homage to. But I think a lot of times outros get kind of cast aside these days because we've already put so much effort into grabbing people's attentions and holding onto it. But I mean, the outros are just as much part of the song as any other section, right? So maybe they deserve the same amount of attention. For me, it was just really refreshing to hear the new elements she would include at the end or like the complete beat switch ups that only exist in the ending. It was almost like a treat for sticking around to the end. <laughs> I just feel inspired to put more thought and time and effort into the outros and how I close out my songs, and I wanna pass that on to you as well. And as Kanye once said, no fade outs. The last thing I extracted from the album was that incorporating sample dialogue into your music is such a powerful way of fusing the emotional quality that you wanna convey with the music itself. Now, of course, we know that Beyonce is nowhere near the first artist to do this, but something about the way that she wove certain phrases into the compositions served as a reminder for me about how something so simple can add so much. And if you saw our video on how to produce like MF Doom, you'll know that he's a great example of an artist that adds a ton of dialogue samples to his beats, which piles on even more flavor to his already saucy style. So. I recommend that you go experiment with sampling some clips from TV shows or from interviews or from your own voicemails. I don't know. Hopefully they're not too dramatic, <laughs> but just anything that you feel can support or inspire some emotion in what you create. All right. I hope you guys got some inspiration from the lessons that I extracted from Beyonce's new album, but 
How did you feel about the album? Did you like it? Did you hate it? Did you think it was cool that it was a little bit different? And most importantly, what do you hope to incorporate in your own music from it? I'd love to hear your thoughts down below. Stay creative, and we'll see you in the next video.